This conference will now be recorded. 1 Corinthians 1.10 reads, Hallelujah. It says, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. So, Lord, so last week we started off talking about the seed of the kingdom, and we understand the seed of the kingdom is Messiah. Right, he he is that seed of the kingdom, but we understand that that he came right to 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 be a perfect example, perfect example to us to represent the kingdom. But he had to come to establish the kingdom in the earth, right? So when he when when, when he died, he had already planted more seeds, right? And those seeds now is it represent his fruit, which is us. But inside those seeds. It's everything inside the seeds that he put inside of, of us, in us was everything we needed to represent the kingdom. Right. Um, remember, we read that uh, Genesis 1 11 last week that says that the seed is in itself. And it only can produce its own time. The seed can only produce what's inside of the seed. And this is very important because this lets you know if the seed is in you. Because you only can produce the character of the seed if that seed is in you. Now we understand you also have a seed with this flesh and that's what the fight is. You're fighting this, this flesh in order for that seed that's been planted in you to, to to, to be shown forth and that's what the dying is all about that's what the dying is all about you have to die to this flesh in order to allow the character of our king to be shown in this earth through, through your body um we're gonna we're gonna get into it. i want us to let me say this because this in this hour right here zion we have to be anchored in the Messiah. You have to make sure that you are anchored in him. Not anchored in no, no, no ministry, not anchored, not even in your own self. You got to make sure that you are anchored in him and that that's where your faith relies in him. Because it's going to get, it, well, it's already shaky, but it's going to get real shaky, okay, in this earth. And if you're not anchored in the Messiah, you, you, you're going to be a part of that falling away. So we have to make sure that we have our faith in him and, 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 and him alone. It, it's very important. Um, let's go to Ecclesiastes uh, 42 in the park. So, so Rod 42. Let me, let me pull this real quick. Let me pour this. Hallelujah. We better get to it though. Let's see here. Uh, Is Raina here? Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 42, a Sirach 42, and the Apocrypha. Um, I'm going to start at. I'm going to start at verse 19, Zion. All right. Well, 18, verse 18. It says, He seeketh out the deep and the hard and considers their crafty devices. For the Lord knoweth all that may be known, and he beholdeth the signs of the world. He declared the things that are past and for to come. He revealeth the steps of hidden things. Okay. 
No thought escapeth him, neither any word is hidden from him. He hath garnished the excellent works of his, of his wisdom, and he is from everlasting to everlasting. Unto him may nothing be added, neither can be diminished, and he hath no need of any counselor. Oh, how desirable are all his works, and that a man may see even to a spark. All these things live and remain forever for all uses, and they are all obedient. This is why I came here. All things are double, one against another, and he hath made nothing imperfect. One thing established the good of another, and who shall be filled with beholding his glory? Okay, so verse 24 lets you know he made nothing imperfect. Everything became, most things became, huh, almost everything became imperfect, dealing with human beings, right? And, and some of the spirits, angels, became imperfect because of their own desire. Okay? He made nothing imperfect. Because he's a, a he, he's an Abba of perfection. Huh? What happens, he gives you your free will. And, and, and what happens, your free will will uh, allow you to be imperfect. But he created us in perfection. And, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is because this is a, it, look. Let me take my time. Go, go to Second Thessalonians before we even really get into the lesson. Because I think this is needed to um, what, what what's upon us right now. Um, we got to be anchored. You got to make sure you're anchored. You got to make sure you're anchored in Hamashiach. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. It said, First Thessalonians chapter two, verse one, one through three. It says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye may not, watch this, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither in spirit nor by word, nor by letter as for us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come itself. There come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So we look, so we know that great falling away uh, is going to happen, and it is happening. But I want us to understand this, brothers and sisters. You can't fall away unless you're in the truth, right? So just 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 trip off this one off for the sake. This for is if 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 we say that Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, some the Sunday Church, whatever they Christianity, whatever. If we say they don't have the truth, that means they not even they can't even fall away, because they already off. So the falling away must come from what the people that's in the truth. But the fallen way is going to come by because of bad teaching. People are going to start deceiving people. People are going to study themselves right out of the Bible. That's why I'm telling you about to stay anchored in the Lord. Because it's already upon us. Look. If the seed is the word of God, and you in his image, we understand we are living epistles. We are his word as well. But he's the lamb. We like sheep. We must understand this. So the attack is going to be upon. It's already happened. The, the attack is on your book. The, the attack is on your word. So if they can get you to not believe your word, and that's what you are, you're going to start doubting that the seed is even in you. That's how the following way going to happen. Because you can't tell me for your word 
and, and, and follow the, the Ruach, huh? What you got? If you ain't anchored in, in Messiah, if you're not anchored in the word, what you got? I'm telling y'all right now, and I know this report. If me, Ricky Ricardo Smith Jr., born May 3rd, 1980, St. Joseph Hospital, Tampa, Florida. Don't know the zip code. Parents, Ricardo Smith and Yvette Smith. Huh? Come telling y'all that something is wrong with your Bible. Y'all get away. Pray for me now that I come back. But don't listen because I'm going off. I'm going off. And you will need the saints to, to pray for you to get me back on. But prayerfully, that never happens. You know what I'm saying? I, I can stand on that. I ain't going to get too cocky and say it won't never happen. But if the Bible says I should never fall if I stand on this word. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand on the word. So I have confidence I'm never going to fall. So I'm always keeping my faith in him, not in my own mind. But I'm just saying this because it's already upon us. It's coming. It's already here. Stay rooted and grounded in your word. If you don't understand something, I rely on the Holy Ruach to break it down to you. Be patient until you reveal it unto you. Look, let's hit this. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to get to the lesson. We're in the lesson now. Go to that. Go, let, let's go to Job 32. Let's see what I'm talking about. Let's see who give understanding. We're going to get to the we end. We're going to really get to this. Job 32, uh, ver, ver, verse, verse 8. Let me put it up in the strong. Let's see something. Job 32, verse 8. I'm pulling up in the strong. Look, he say, he say, but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding when you hit that word inspiration it's going to tell you it, it, it's neshama which is the wind like the breath but the spirit right the spirit is the ruach so the breath right is the ruach with the breath right that's going to give you understanding not it is it, 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 it hallelujah let's see what he's glory so 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 what happens is not you that give yourself understanding it's the spirit. It, th that's how I know when he blew the breath, when he blew that breath into Adam, he wasn't just blowing, he was blowing life in him, but in that life, what 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 was what, what, the character? What's the what's the understanding of the creation? Adam had it. He blew his word into him. He put, he put itself into him. That's when you get to the New Testament, you see the Messiah breathing on them. He ain't just blowing breath on them. He blowing the breath of life into them. That's why I often say we breathing another breath. We, we, we breathing on another vibration. You could be in the same room with somebody. Y'all ain't breathing the same breath. If they're, they're not breathing the breath of life. But my, my point is, he gives us understanding. Let nobody trick you about your book. Let nobody get you. No, no, don't let nobody strip you out the truth. Let's get to it. Um, let's look at the first commandment, Zion. The first commandment in the Bible. Anybody can tell me what's the first commandment in the Bible that was. That was given to man. It's in Genesis, of course. Thou shalt not put no other God before him. Uh uh. That's oh. definitely a commandment, but ain't the, that ain't the first one. Let me hit my phone. It ain't the first one, though. That's Can definitely one, but that's not the first. I'm sorry, go what ahead. Do you have to do with the problem? 
I don't know. I don't know if that's me, but I, I think your phone echoing, sis. Yeah, is it Yahuwah? Is, is your Elohim? Okay, bro. Uh, no, nah, that's not the first commandment. It's a commandment. It's something that we were told to do. It's a commandment. Be fruitful and multiply. Yes, sir. Let's read it. To be fruitful and multiply, and <laughs> it's funny what Mister Lee said because you cannot be fruitful and multiply unless you understand that first. <laughs> this, this, this is good. I'm so. You got some, sis? No, go ahead. Okay. So, so, so let let let's let's read it. Let's read Genesis one twenty six real quick. Let's start at Genesis one twenty six. Because to be fruitful and multiply, you, you only can be fruitful and multiply if you have a seed. You can't multiply anything without a seed, right? Let's look at this command that he told uh, uh, Adam. He said, well, let's start at 26. It says, um, it says, and Elohim, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish, over the seas, over the fowl, over the air, over, over, over and over all the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we have to be fruitful and multiply. And it ain't talking about, we're we gonna see they ain't talking about you having no physical kids. We, we're gonna see that you can be fruitful and multiply without you having physical kids. That command, this, this commandment applies to everybody. gonna get to it but you when he giving him this commandment right here this is under the authority that he's already in the image of the messiah and Abba. so he's telling him and, and that replenish don't mean like you, how you thinking about it that replenish means to, to, to fill it don't mean to repopulate because i know some people some of these gurus out here try to say with already people on the earth so he just re that repopulated because they see that word re in front of finish. So they just think it like rewind or something to do over. No, when you look it up. It actually just means to, to fill. So he's telling Adam, Adam's job was to go fill the whole earth with the image of Yahuwah. That was his job. Fill the whole earth with this, with this, with this beautiful image. You know, make these kids, these kids, you got my image, you start procreating, you they gonna be in uh, uh, my image. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of little knees around the whole earth. But we see he didn't get, he didn't get too far because they fell in that garden. And when they fell in that garden, now you see Adam start making men, his son start coming his own image. So now you have an imperfect image in the earth. But originally, the image was perfect. But because of the fall of Adam and Eve, now he's making uh, things after his own image, after a distorted, a distorted image. You see, he, he's now he, he he's now making things after his own image. When his job, Adam and Eve's Adam and Eve's job was to fill the earth up with the beauty of the Creator. Everybody in the world was supposed to be looking like the Father. One image. Can you imagine if you, if, if everybody looked like you, you gonna be saying, you so beautiful, you look so good, you so cute. You ain't gonna be coming at nobody crazy if everybody looked like you. You gonna be treating them with respect, you gonna be treating them with love, you gonna be so compassionate. If every, imagine if everybody looked like you and thought like you. But but that, but but being in the image of, of the uh, of Almighty, you see what I'm saying? 
because that that was the plan to 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 to, to fill the earth with my image. I want to see myself when I look down. When I look among the earth, I want to see me. Yeah, he like looking at himself. He like looking at yourself too. Hmm? So that that was the plan. So when he looked at earth, he seen nothing but beauty. He seen nothing but love. Because the Bible says the Elohim is love. So that's what he was looking at. He, he wanted to see love on the earth. But we understand the fall happened. So now he started looking at the earth, boy. What he started seeing? He started seeing a bunch of foolishness. So then he set a plan into play, right? And, and, and this is where I think we have to understand as, as uh, uh, how Israel fall into that plan. Okay, how they fall into the plan, but the plan is not about them. It's not about us. We just fall into the plan to help beautify the earth again. But it only can come by way of the seed that he had gave. It only can come by the way of the seed of Hamashiach because that's what he wanted to see. He wanted to see himself. When he look at you, he want to see himself. Y'all know a couple months ago, we, we, we broke down, uh, we the apple of his eye, and the apple in the eye stood for the little pupil, the little man in the eye. You know what I'm saying? How you look at a person, and you can see that person in your eye. You, 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 you look in that person's eye, and then you see yourself. That, that, that's the mindset of, of us being the apple of his eye. He, we supposed to be looking at each other and seeing him gazing upon one another getting lost in each other's eyes because it's the beauty of the messiah that we're looking at it never was meant to be that we see somebody and we think wicked the moment we see them but but that, that's all said and done it happened but now we, 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 we he, he getting it right right now. So he, he chose our ancestors, right? Chosen us to, to restore this, this image back in the earth, right? But, but what I want to do, I want to give an understanding of the word. We always say this word, the word Torah, right? You can't find the word Torah nowhere written in the Bible. You can't find that word nowhere, right? So I think we got to get a, 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 a get a, a understanding, if you don't already have one. Most people probably already got one of the word Torah, because when most people hear the word Torah, the first thing coming to their mind is law, right? Which that is a, a, a level of Torah, you can say it's the law, but it's way deeper than just the law. The word Torah itself, Torah means instruction, teaching. It actually means to, and we're, we're gonna look up a couple words, to direct, to shoot, all right? Torah is instructions to lead you down a path. I don't have to instruct you on a law. I don't have to give you instructions if I just give you, if it's just a law by itself, I don't have to give you an instruction on a law. I just tell you the law and that's it. That is what it is. You either keep it or you don't. But Torah is a deeper understanding when we look at it from the instruction perspective. See, if you're looking at it, Torah, just based off, because most people, when they say Torah, come to their mind, it's the first five books. But we understand that can't be because the Messiah was talking to our ancestors. What he said, he said, it's written what? In your law that ye are king, uh, that ye are gods. Is it written in your law that ye are gods? Where do we find that at in Torah? Because he said law, the word there is Torah. You can't find that in the first five books. You find that in the book of Psalms because it's the instructions. So in essence, it says that the spirit, the Bible is inspired by, by the word of Yah. Uh, it's breathed, right? So, so, so the whole book is instructions. But we understand foundation, if you want to say the first five books. But we must understand Torah from the mindset of instructions. Let's look at some words here. Go to um, go to Exodus four two. 
let's look up some more. Let's get this tour down before we move on. Uh, Want us to see this because when we see this, when we when we when we get this for let me go down here, start that. We ain't got we we just get the point. Uh jump down to verse I'm gonna read two. We'll we'll jump down to verse twelve. Jump down to verse twelve just to get to the point. It says, Um, now therefore go and I will be thy mouth and teach thee. What thou have, ha, 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 what thou shalt say, right? When you hit that word, it's H. You put up H three three eight four, right? We see as the word Yara, right? We see as the word Yara. This is the root word for Torah. We're gonna put it up in a minute. But under, when you look at the definition, one of the definitions, what is the, it's the uh, throw, right? To shoot, to point, to aim, to teach. Right to cast, right? So it's like when you're teaching, you're pointing somebody in a direction. Remember, we already said, and this is why this is so important. No more can give you understanding. The more job, we're gonna see it, is to point you in a direction of truth, to shoot you that way. But it's always the spirit of the more and the spirit in you, and it should be y'all. Uh, that would bring the understanding. That way, the more he don't don't get beside himself and thinking he uh, 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 something. All right, it's the spirit that's in the more right? That that will be given the understanding. But all the more he can do is just uh, uh, point you in a direction. And guess what? The woman can do that too because check this out. It says that you train up a what a child in the way they should go. You're pointing them in a direction and they shall not depart, right? You, you train up a child the way they should go. All you can do is train your child up in the way they can go. Send them off in the right path. And that start off with teaching them the right thing, the way to go. So I, 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 look, so Torah, we're going to see it. Let's get to it. do too much talking. It's, so we see this word, Yara, the word teach is the word to, to, to what? It just means to throw, to, to shoot. To, to point you in a direction. He says 388, he put it on the screen, 3384. So let's go to H8445. Put that up in the strongs. H8445. No, 51. I think I wrote that down wrong. 51. H8451. We're going to look at that word law, right? We're going to look at the word law. Uh, let me pull it up. It's H8451. The word law is Torah, right? When you look at that, you see it's from the definition that we just read, which is 83384. So H8451, the word law, Torah, right? It has its root word coming from the word of what? H3384, which is what we just read, which is Yara. Okay? So law is, 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 understand, it's a teaching. It's to direct you in a certain path. Pull this one up, bro. H, H41, go to H4175. This is important when we get to the lesson because we got to have this understanding because this is why the word says, uh, okay, H4175, that's what it's the word more rate, right? You see what it says by the word more rate for the same root word, what is H3384, and it got an archer, right? An archer is like the dude who shoots for an arrow, y'all, you know that. It's a teacher, okay? Again, it's giving you the mindset that the more rate job. It's to shoot you, direct you in the right path. That, that's what it's about. So this is why, if we understand now, the Messiah, it says what? He, because he is no greater more ready than the Messiah. That's why he say what? 
I'm the what? The way, the truth, and the life. Because the job of the Moray is to shoot you down the same path that the Messiah has, has already laid down. And then he's going to give you understanding, right? That's why you're reading that Luke uh, in 24, 44, where it says, then he opened their understanding unto the scriptures, the Messiah by way of the Spirit done this. Okay? So, reason why I'm bringing this out, because if a moray is not shooting you or directing you in the right path, with a foundation of Torah, okay, without the testimony, as Isaiah 8, 20 tells you, there's no light in them. So how, how can you, how can you uh, travel down a path where there's no light? How can, how can a teacher instruct you or shoot you or cast you or send you down a road where there's no light? But we just read in that Ecclesiastes and that's a rock, what, 42, 24, it says that the hidden things of the path is going to be uh, revealed. But if you got no light, how, how, how something going to be revealed? How are you going to see something? This thing is about us directing, right? Directing the people down the right path. You have to have the spirit, right? Because it's the spirit that's gonna bear with the spirit with the spirit. So now when the teacher is teaching, the people have the spirit, and then it's like like if a more trying to teach, right? Even with your kids, you could be trying to teach them something and you telling them over and over, over, and you're trying to break it down, and then next thing you know, they got that aha moment. It's like, oh, I got it. But you be, you could be saying the same thing for like 15, 20 minutes. So that should let you know you don't give nobody no understanding. Because you've been saying the same thing. It's the spirit that finally clicks on and then they catch it. But our job is to just shoot you down the right path. But we also, it's a problem. we also, the more we also, right, has to be what? Going down the right path. I'm going to shoot you down and say this is the way to truth of life and I'm walking another way. You know who was doing that? Who was doing that? The Pharisees. That's why the Messiah told them in that Matthew 23, he say, look, whatever they tell you when they sit in the seat of Moses, do it. Because they're they saying the right thing. That's going to lead you the right way. But when they get down, don't you follow them because they're going the opposite way that Torah telling them. And at that time, they were the more raised. But when they sit in the Moses seat and they teach the Torah, they teach the laws and instructions, you do what they're telling you because they shoot you the right way. But don't follow them because they send you one way, they telling you to go this way, but then themselves is going another way. So what what will happen if, if if somebody telling you to go this way and then you seeing them go the other way, that's gonna be confusion. And that's why he called them hypocrites, because they bring confusion to the people. Whatever we're speaking, whatever direction, how can you be a shepherd and you sending your sheep this way and then you walking the other way? This will happen to our people. We're going to get into it. Because we were supposed to be a kingdom of what? Priests. Kingdom of priests, right? But if we're a kingdom of priests and we're trying to send to other nations, we're telling them to go one way, but then we're going another way. Woo! What'd that make us? I'm gonna look at this Proverbs 1 8. Let, let, let's bring the sisters involved in this too. That Proverbs 1 8. Uh, we all know this scripture. Proverbs 1 8. It says, my, my son, hear the instructions, right, of thy father, and forsake not what? The law of thy mother. Right? It says, forsake not the law of thy mother. The law of the mother is the mother's job was to instruct the kids in the household how to go. That's the law. She ain't making her own laws. She's instructing them. So he's telling you don't forsake the law of thy mother if she's instructing you. The, the, the scripture telling that she's instructing you the right way. Don't forsake that right way. You forsake that right way, you're going to be going on. So we got the moray, his, his job 
the, the, the teacher, right? Job is to instruct, to shoot, to direct in the right way. But he himself has to be going the right way. You, you see what I'm saying? Uh, and then what happens, you get on one accord and that spirit is going to give us understanding. That's what that Job 32, 8 was about. It say the spirit of the inspiration. It says the inspiration uh, will, will give us understanding. That's that breath. That's what, that's what it means, that breath. It's that ruach that will give us understanding. It all goes back to him. It all goes back to giving the, the spirit, right? Because the spirit is only going to tell you what the Messiah is, is telling the spirit to say, right? So what happened, it all goes back to giving him the glory. The minute any more Ray or anybody, I don't know what you call a female teacher, but uh, we call him Morris. Anybody know? It, it, it leaves my train of thought. What, what is a female teacher? They, I know they call the male Morris. Morris is teacher. And yeah, it's Mora. Mora? Okay, hallelujah. So a Moray or a Mora, both of them should be uh, sending you the right way. And then what happens, the understanding comes by the, the spirit because the spirit knows if they send you the right way and, and they got that light in them, and you got that light in you, the more you walk down the path, things going to be revealed unto you. You see what I'm saying? Because look, they always say, I'm the way, right? I'm the way, I'm the way, the truth, the light. So the Messiah is the way. Once you start falling away, now what's going to happen? You're going to start coming into truth. And when you come into that truth, now the truth is going to bring life to you. You see what I'm saying? Because you fall in the right way. You fall in the Messiah. So now you walk in the right way. Truth start getting revealed unto you each and every day. The more you keep falling away, you keep getting more truth. Now you get abundance of life. Each, from the time you came into this walk, you, you, sh you should be getting more and more life. You see what I'm saying? Because more and more truth is getting uh, revealed unto you. So now you're getting life and life more abundant than you had. We weren't living, what they say in the world, they living their best life. They ain't living their best life. They're not living the life of the Messiah. Your best life is when you die to yourself and you're walking in uh, Hamashiach and then you start walking in truth. And then now you really get life. Really get life. But my point of bringing this out is that the more Ray or the more Ra, right? It's supposed to point you into the direction. And we can understand that, Zion. When we teach our family members are trying to uh, bring them into uh, the, uh, the Messiah, right? All we can do is just point them. Don't pull them. How you put them? Now, I know the scripture, brother, say you pull them out of the fire, right? And all this, right? You still, watch what I'm finna say. Your job when you're teaching someone is to point them to shoot them in the right direction. The problem that Israel had. We ain't gonna have it no more, right? Nobody that's rocking with us, but preferably, is that we were trying to shoot the people one way, but we doing something else. It, it, it's kind of like a, a a man with a ball spot trying to sell a real game. You going door to door saying, "Man, I got this miracle hair growth," but you rocking the uh, George Jefferson. You, you, you think they're gonna believe that? You think they're going to believe that that miracle hair growth work, work? If your whole dome missing? No. They ain't going to believe that. This was going on. So when we talking about Torah, when we talking about this is the way, but we started living, <laughs> but we start living a, another way, it, it takes away from the word. Because it's like, man, how are you telling me this? You're trying to shoot me that way, telling me this the way, but then, bro, I'm watching you, and then you doing something else. We're gonna get it together though. We're gonna see that it all come by way of we we're gonna see that it all come by way of what this seed. Look, it uh, because if, if it ain't the Holy Spirit that's giving us understanding, right? And, and this is exactly what happened. The men, right, stop shooting the people in the right way, and they start trying to make the people follow them, even though. It, it, you, you, well, what Paul said, you follow me as I follow the Messiah, right? But the people, the, the, the teachers started leading the people astray because they stopped teaching the word, right? 
They start teaching what I call man steps or, or he steps. They start teaching precepts of men. Let's go to Isaiah, go to Isaiah 29. They start teaching these he steps. What they start like doing? Let's see it. It says, wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near, near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart from me and their fear toward me taught by the precept of what? Of men. We supposed to be teaching, learning about the precepts uh, of the word, not precepts of men. So it's the same thing right now. A lot of people are, are the precept. They're living according to man. So if man is giving you a precept, if man is, if man is shooting you the way that man thinks, that's going to go, that they shoot you in the wrong direction. They, we always should be shooting each other the, to the way of the Messiah, to the way of the, the, way of the kingdom. That's why Paul said, man, I preach Christ. I'm trying to preach you, I'm trying to preach you the way. Because he the one that brings us to light. But, but we lose it. I was, uh, well, I didn't bring that up. Look at Isaiah 28. I'm just going to say it. I ain't going to say what we need. Look, in Isaiah 28, I'm going to read that verse, uh, verse, we start at verse 8, right? It says, for all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so there is no place clean. Whom shall teach, right? Whom shall teach? That's that word Yara again, right? Who shall teach, right? It is the mindset is shooting you in the right way, right? Who shall teach knowledge, right? And whom shall make understand doctrine, right? That they are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, upon precept, line upon line. Upon line here a little and there a little, right? That's 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 one of the favorite scriptures that brothers you, right? But when you read down, and this is true, if you got the right heart and you're trying, you're gonna line upon line precept by precept. But if you got a wicked heart, look what these precepts gonna do to you. Watch this. It says, just look at verse 13. Let me read, I'll read now. 11. It says, For with the stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the rest where when ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would hear. They would not hear. Look at verse 13. But the word of the Lord was upon them. Precept upon precept. Upon precept. Line upon line. Upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they may go and fall backward. And be broken and a snare and taken. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord. He scorn for men that rule this people, which is in Jerusalem. See, this is a little nugget here, right? Because what happens, if you follow the word, you can tell when a brother or a sister is giving you key steps, right? The precept in the Bible are uh, uh, out of context and take you from scripture to scripture and it's taking you backwards, taking you on fall into a snare. It's not the truth. But just because somebody is swift with the tongue and know how to give me John 15, give me this, this whatever scripture brother's pulling out real quick, real quick. You don't have no understanding of that word. He's giving you the wrong precept, twisting you all up. If you get caught up, not nobody here, get caught up in uh, the fact that the brother or the sister is good with or memorizing scriptures, book, chapter, verse. When in when in the original book, there's no book, chapter, verses. We should just be able to speak the word to one another, and then the spirit bear witness. He's like, okay, I know that's the word. You see what I'm saying? But because all of us not walking in the, in, in the spirit in the earth, now the brother may say something real crazy. You say, brother, what book, chapter, and verse is that? All right, 
But originally, there was no book. There were no chapters. There were no numbers. But the Almighty does everything for a reason. He even got this book set up where the teacher is trying to teach you something out of the book. And if it's wrong, you're going to better tell it easy. You, you can tell it easy, but you got to. Let me say this. Hallelujah. We're going to get back to the seed. You got to be born of that seed to catch it. If you're not born of that seed, this word, you ain't better catch it. You ain't better catch it. You're not gonna better catch it. But so, so, so I, I, I pray that we just understand that more law, teacher, all, all this, all this means is to shoot you in the right direction. To shoot you in the right direction. Because this, this, this will give you, because if I'm shooting you in the right direction, right. And then I'm going off, I'm going to be like, whoa, why am I way over here? And they way over there. You see what I'm saying? It even helps the more rape. That's why the people have to know the word, right? Because if, the, if somebody start going off, the people have to be like, nah, bro, or sis, we ain't supposed to be going that way. Because it's what this word say. You trying to shoot us over there. You know, when they say when a man comes to you saying, go out to the desert, the Messiah out there, well, you going to follow him? You going to go that way? What you going to say? You going to let him shoot you to the desert? Because the Messiah out there, he's out there teaching and healing. Let's go out there. If I come, if I ain't going to play with me like that. If somebody come out there and say, hey, we're going out at a Cali. I heard the Messiah out there. Y'all going to follow him? <laughs> I know y'all won't follow. Y'all about not follow that. I say, nah, bro, that ain't the Messiah. That's the devil trying to shoot us in the wrong direction. All right, let's get to it. Let's read it. I want to read what I said. Let's read this Exodus 6, Exodus 19. Let's get it. Let's get this real quick now. Talking about the seed must die. Look at this man. Straight out of Egypt. He said, what would you tell? He said, read verse five. It say, verse five say, uh, now therefore, if but that, that, that a little two-letter word. A little two-letter word is a big word. It's small, but it's big. It say, if ye obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Right? So he this is what he he's showing us. Look, he, he say, if you we're a peculiar people. No, if you ain't keeping his word, are you? Are, are, if you're not keeping his word or being his voice, are you peculiar? Nah. Right? Are you above all people on the earth if you're not keeping his word? Walk with me. It says, and ye shall be unto me a what? A kingdom of priests. So you only become a kingdom of priests if you're doing what? Obeying his word and, and keeping his word because a priest's job is to teach. So if you're not obeying his word to keep his word and you're teaching, that means you're going to be shooting people the wrong way. He said, ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Boy, if if you're doing it, then we're king, then we're peculiar, then we're blood. Because the job of our ancestors, right, was to to teach the other nations. He was setting us up and for to put us in a land to be a, a, a fruit. We're gonna read it, right? To be he was he said, to plant us in a land to be a fruit, right? So then we can go out and spread the seed and get more fruit. 
right? Right? So we can start doing what was, uh, 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 well, we could say prophesied over there or, or spoke, spoke to Adam. Right? He was setting us up to go do what Adam was supposed to do. Okay? To go put his, because his word is him. Right, it, his word is from him. So when you go preach that word to the other people, if they believe it, now they become who he is. Now the whole earth gonna be just as as he is and just as we are. That that was the game plan. A kingdom of priests. I'm gonna choose these people. Yo, you know, I made my covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm gonna choose y'all. Y'all keep my word. You see what I'm saying? And then y'all y'all gonna go spread this gospel. Go to Deuteronomy 32. So it's if we keep this word, right? And we established last week that the word is the seed, which is the Messiah, right? I'm gonna read verse one for context. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. All right? So he's speaking the words to them, right? My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish, this, I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness. Unto our God. So so the, the, he, he's speaking his word to them and he want to publish his name, right? We know name is Shem, which is character. So the thing is, when he speaks his word to us, we, we believe the doctrine, we take on his character. And then our job is to go uh, push this character, right, uh, uh, to, the, to the whole world at that point. But if we're going to preach his doctrine, his name, having his character, we also have to be walking in that same light. We can't be preaching the, 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 the doctrine and we not exemplifying the character. You can, but what that's going to look like? How long do you think people are going to believe that? Oh, hallelujah. Look, let me read. Let me finish reading. Let me read verse three. Because I will publish it, the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness un unto our God. Watch this, verse four. He is the rock. His work is what perfect. It say He is the rock. His work is perfect. Who is the rock? Who the rock is? Messiah, right? But I want, we're gonna catch something. It says, for all His what ways are are our judgment, a God of truth. Without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and a crooked generation. But we don't went off. At this point, right, he already, we were supposed to be a kingdom of priests. How can a kingdom of priests go out and straighten the world out if they crooked and perverse? What type of priest is that? Will you follow a crooked or perverse priest? You would if you don't know what straight is. It says, do you thus request the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and he and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bonds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Okay. Jump down to verse 32, I believe. Let me see. Yeah. I'm going to go to the strong list right there. Right there. Hold on. Right here. Verse 32. 
Watch this, Zion. Hallelujah. Uh, what does it say? He has begotten us. The rock begot us. Uh, hold on here. Let me be in here. Watch this. We're going to pull this out. Hold on. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm looking for us. We've begotten of the rock. I think it's 32. Hold on. I think it's 32. I want us to see this because it's going to go right back to um, Exodus. I mean, not the Exodus, but to um, Genesis. Hallelujah. Yeah, 18. I'm sorry. It's 18. I knew it said, let's go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look, so it says, I'm, I'm going to start at verse, uh, I'm just going to read verse 18. It says, of the rock, right? We understand that rock is who? Who is that rock? Messiah, right? It says, of verse 18 says, Of the rock that what? Forgot thee, thou art mindful and has forgotten God that formed thee. Okay? So you look at that word begot. Let's pull that word begot up in the strongs. Watch this. Let's pull that up. It says, Of the rock that begot thee. Right, that word begot is H thirty two o five. Right, is your your lad? Right, that's what it is to bring forth children. That's what it means to bring forth children. So they say we were begotten of that rock. Let's see something. You go to Genesis four one. Watch this just to show. It's the same word. Genesis four. Um, it says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and bear Cain, and his son have gotten a man of the Lord. You look at that word bear, you're going to see that's the same word as begot, right? It means to bring forth, okay, to birth. So with that understanding, it's saying that the, the, the rock birthed us. Now, my question is, we know the Messiah did not physically have sex with no woman to bring forth no kids. So how is he uh, uh, birthing us? How is he birthing them at this point? What what birthed them? How did he birth them? How did he begot them? Because it's trying to show us, it's giving us a metaphor, but it's it's setting us up for this New Testament that's coming. And what we, what our job was supposed to be, when he begot us, our job was to go out and then do the same thing. He, he, he When he was speaking that word, when he gave us that word, when he gave us that fiery law, right, it was changing our mind. It should have been changing our mind. It's supposed to be burning up. That fiery law was supposed to be uh, uh, destroying the works of Egypt that's in your mind and birth you into a new uh, a new creature. They were supposed to be getting birth and, and to this new nation that was coming out of Egypt. But what happened? What happened? We come out of Egypt. It said he, he, he begot us, but we forgot. He said he formed us. Uh, and, and, un, let me read that again. Let me read that one more time. 18. It says, of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. He hated them. Got away from him because of provoking of his son and his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from thee. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Watch this. A children in whom what? There is what? Some faith? Now, if faith, our faith come by hearing what? So if you ain't got no faith in it at this point, he's telling you. Uh, you a kingdom of priests, a peculiar people, if you uh, obey my voice. So at this point, if you ain't got no faith, even if you're hearing the word, you're not obeying it. So now this is how we become a perverse, cricket generation. 
because now we start going our own way, doing what we want to do. But when he first brought us up, it's like, yo, I want y'all to be a kingdom of priests. If you obey my voice, right, you're going to be able to cure your people. But we had got to the point where we like, yo, we got unmindful. We got cocky in a matter of years, not even years, a couple months. But it all was a part of the plan. All was a part of the plan. Let's get this right here. Go to Deuteronomy uh, 33. Let's pull this. So we, we, I, I don't want nobody here to become unmindful. But how do you keep your, how do you keep your mind on them? How, how do you keep your mind on the Messiah where you won't become unmindful? Let me ask that. That's a question. How do we? How do we not? Because we, when we get this New Testament, we're gonna see that we, he gonna be God us. But how do we not fall in the same mistake? that our ancestors did and become unmindful. Because we don't want to, we don't want what they say, how they say it, let history repeat itself. Hmm? We don't want to let history repeat itself, do we? Um, that, that'd be a no-no. Look at verse uh, Deuteronomy 33. So they had the law. It says, this is the blessing wherein Moses, the man of children uh, uh, of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, the Lord came from Zion and rose up from Sarah unto them. He shined forth uh, uh, from Mount Paran and he came with ten thousands of his saints from his right hand with a what? Fiery law for them. Yeah, he loved the people. All his saints are in his hand, and they sat down at his feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. Okay? So he gave them a fiery law. Because our God is a consumer, a God of fire. He's a consuming fire. That fiery law, what, what, what does fire do? Fire illuminates, it destroys, and it also, it also uh, uh, makes the land fertile again. You see, when he gave them that fiery law, is for the going mind, burn up uh, Egypt, huh? Burn those thoughts up, huh? Uh, illuminate their mind and, and, and push them to uh, the right way. That's what that word was gonna do. They they got that word as a word to do. But we're gonna see what happens when you mind the things of the world, right? When you want to go back to Egypt, when you want to uh, deal with the world, something can come and pluck that seed right out, get that word right out of you. See, we supposed to get that word and protect that word like it's a baby. Put that word inside like your womb. Protect it. You don't get this word and then uh, be thinking about the world. He begot us, but they became unmindful and forgot. They forgot. Man, how many times we don't, you know, he don't done a work in our lives. You you've been praying for a job, don't happen to me a time or two. You praying for a job, you, you, you even get some of the brothers and sisters. Y'all pray for me. I want this job. Then the Lord give you the job. You like hallelujah. You give your testimony about the job. Then your boss go to talking crazy to you too much into the job. Like you don't like a couple of people that now you start complaining about the job. You you, you don't even want to go to the job. You become unmindful that man. You just was praying for the job a couple months ago. It was a blessing that you got, but now you're treating it like a curse. Oh, the Lord doesn't want me here. Uh, I, I don't think He wants me here. I thought you were praying for the job, and the Lord bless you with it. But now I don't think I, I must have missed them. I missed them. <laughs> what are you missing them right now? You become unmindful. Because of the own lust and desires of your own heart. You want to have it your way instead of Yahweh. Anybody ever been out? Well, am I the only one? The boy I ate. That's flesh. We can talk about that. But 
I'm understanding now it's all about him. Wherever he got you at, be the light where you at. Light up. Illuminate wherever you at. Illuminate wherever you are. Let's go to Isaiah 5. Let's get to this. <laughs> oh man, he's so good. He loves us. Okay, so look, he 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 took us, he took us out of Egypt, right? Watch what he do. Boy, he say, now I will sing a song. I mean uh, Isaiah 5, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now will I sing a song to my well beloved, a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well beloved has a vineyard and a very fruitful hill. So we see ain't nothing wrong with the, with the ground. It's a very fruitful hill, meaning the soil good, right? And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choice vine, the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press there. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes. And it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. What could I have what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I look, it should bring forth grapes, brought forth wild grapes. Now, let me let me let me just say this. So what happened? He's giving us what he had done. He took us out of he took us out of land, out of Egypt. Before we get to the promised land, he 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 cleaned it up. Well, he gonna he was going before us to clean it up, but you know what we end up going in the get Canaanites out. But the scriptures say, "I will go before you." We are gonna get to that. But I want us to just understand this. He's saying, "Look, I planted you in a very fruitful place." Now, let's understand this. He's not saying he put them in the land just to produce some physical grapes, okay? To get some wine so we can be getting drunk in there. Nah. Yes, exactly what he's talking about. It's talking about his character, right? I put y'all in the land where you can be fruitful. I got all the rocks. I got everything out. I made that soil pretty. Lawrence know about, about that soil. I bet that boy got some good soil about that. Them greens was good, one. Greens was good. But my point is, he had to get look. You got to get. I guess you got to get all the rocks out. Get all the. He got the, the soil perfect for you, and he planted you there. And then he said, "I even fenced it in, protected you. You, you, you every, everything was perfect for you to produce my fruit, produce my character. Because the thing is, where he placed us at, people, it's like the center. Okay, people are gonna be going. All the nations will be going around Israel, and they'll be able to see the beauty of the people." Right? And it's supposed to draw them. But he said, I done that, and boy, y'all produce, y'all produce wild grapes. I'm to my y'all. We, our ancestors produce wild grapes. How? How do he put you in a perfect growing condition to produce his character, and then we we we, we start wilding out, producing another character. And then he look what he said. To me, this is sad, right? It, it, it's like, man, it, just, it really break my heart. He say, verse four, what could have been done more to my vineyard? That, 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 man, that, that's the Messiah saying, look, what could I have done more to, to make you fruitful? What, what, what have I not done? I've done everything. What more could I have done? Wherefore, when I looked, there should when you he, he, I planted it, so he was expecting something beautiful. He expecting a return. He planted it. Who plant a seed and don't expect nothing to come back? 
he planted that seed. He planted, he begot us. Remember, he begot us and he planted us expecting him to come back. He expected to see himself. But when he came back and he, he looked, he like, man, these wild grapes. What, what else could I have done? And now go, and now go to I will tell you what what would do to my vineyard. I would take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it to waste, and it will be not, and, 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 and it shall not be pruned nor dig, but there shall come up bears and thorns. And, and going back to that God, now you bite the thorns. He cleaned us up, man. He, he made it where it wasn't even no thorns in there. But now he's going to take the hedge of it, right? It says, and I will also command the clouds that the rain, that, 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 that the rain no more upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. He shall look for judgment, but, but, but behold oppression, for righteousness, but behold a cry. Hmm? Y'all hear that? Woe unto them that join the house to house, that lay field to field, to, to, to there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. So we had it good. He, he was protecting us so we could produce him, produce good fruit. But we didn't do it. So he said, man, what's the use? Let me get my hand. Let me, let me back off then. If you ain't even to produce me, if you're not going to bring forth no fruit, man, what am I protecting you for? Why I got my heads around you? If you're going to be like the world, let me, let me step back. Let me, let me remove my, my protection. That's why we about to thank him for that grace and mercy. We about to thank him for that grace and mercy. So he stepped back and then he let the other nation just come in to try to wake us up to see, look, y'all had it good. You may not have the, the, the stone walls or the, 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 the stuff that these other nations had that you're looking at around you, but I put you in this place so you can produce fruit. Because eventually they're going to start looking at you. But you looking at, we, uh, we all, that's our problem. We always looking at the world. We always looking at things that everybody else got instead of looking at what he has already blessed you with. But it's the process that you're going through to get to this point where you can produce fruit. I'm going to become a gardener. Right, we're gonna start doing some guard. <laughs> well, well I, at, at first it started out as her project, but it seemed like it is gonna be. <laughs> boy, how, how we hallelujah! But all praise. So the, the the thing is, whenever we plant something, you're gonna be respecting whatever you planted to come up. But it's gonna take some time. It's gonna be some patience. You have to water that thing. You have to tend to that thing. But you gotta hope that something gonna come up. So can you see our king planted us in a very fruitful hill, protecting that thing, and he's sitting there waiting. He like, when I go back, well, I'm gonna I'm see myself. I'm gonna get me some good food. I'm gonna hear some love. I'm gonna hear some joy. I'm gonna see some peace. I'm gonna see them treating each other with love. I'm gonna see them being gentle with each other. I'm gonna see them uh, 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 just being patient with one another. But when he went back, he started seeing oppression. He started seeing unrighteousness. So he like, yo, if, if they doing this to each other in the land, how did, what the heck they finna do to somebody else? How they finna go to somebody else and teach them? Let me get my hands off. Let me let me take the head and it's gonna be unproved. So what happens when something ain't pruned? If you don't prune the garden, what's gonna happen? It's gonna get choked out. And it's gonna be so hard to tell the 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 the, the fruit from the other vines, it's gonna be a mess in there.
you he was expecting a harvest. He was expecting some fruit. But you know what? The seed that he planted, it had nothing to do with him. It had nothing to do with the soil. It had nothing to do with the protection. Is that that seed refused to die to self in order to produce the fruit that it was supposed to produce. Go to Jeremiah 2. Well, he love us, but for his purpose, he got a plan. He got he got a beautiful plan that's working through us. But we trying to take the plan and make it about us. Don't work that way. This is about glorifying him. I'm gonna start at verse. This is going through. I'm gonna start at verse. Um, just read again. Follow Jeremiah, another prophet. Start at verse twenty. Uh, yeah. For context, for context, let me read verse one and two. But I hate reading that chat. Let me just read verse one and two. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus said the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thy spouse, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. So he's saying, this the Lord, he telling Jeremiah to go cry to them, but really this him. It's really him coming to, to, to the people saying, look, man, I remember how y'all used to love me and, and used to chase after me when you was in your youth. Hmm? I remember that. Israel was what? Holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruits of his increase. All that devoured him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord of the house of Jacob and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, what iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity after and are become vain. We gotta understand this this is the king talking. This how he, he crying out. Again, what did I do? What y'all found in me to make y'all go off? Because I'm, look, he's trying to not he trying, he's gonna do it. He, he 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 was he was trying to get them to a point where they can be him, where they can uh be his character, so then he can get the other sons of Adam. But he's dealing with Israel. He's trying to get them right. The first fruit, the firstborn. He tried, I need the firstborn to act right because y'all going to set the example why the house needs to be ran. He's saying here, what iniquity have you? What y'all found in me? That, 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 what do you say? Verse five say and have walked after vanity and become vain. It wasn't nothing to him. What happened? We got our eyes on those other nations, or some of us still had Egypt in our hearts. Neither say they, "Where is the Lord that brought us out of the land of Egypt?" They led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and pits, through a land of drought, of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passes through, where no man dwell. And I brought you into plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof but when you entered you did what what you done you defiled my land and made my heritage abomination that's his name that's his character because he put his name on us but we we're gonna come bite he, he see the beautiful thing about it man he always leave that door open he leave the door open for us to come by Man, this is the king going to cry out. He telling Jeremiah to go to cry out to my people. Because I remember in your youth, you desired me. But you got in the land and got the big head. Got your little job. Got your little fine, little bow-legged husband, little, 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 little cute wife. Huh? 
got your rims on your car, got your stimulus check. You know what I mean? Now you feeling good about yourself. Huh? But when you thought you was going broke, when you, when, when you, when you was aching, your body aching, I couldn't keep you out of my face. When you needed me. I couldn't keep you away from me. You, you rang on my phone all night, all morning, praying. But the minute I bless you, made you fruitful, left. And the only reason why I'm doing that, one, because I love you, two, because I want you to take on my image so I can get my other kids. Here's Rain the only, they just the firstborn. We, we just the firstborn. We're going to get that, though. Hallelujah. The priest shall not, what does it say? The priest say not, where is the Lord? And they handled the law, knew me not. How they handle the law and they don't know him? So remember what we said earlier about the law's instructions is, is to shoot you in the right direction, right? So if the priests don't know them and they got the law, how are they shooting the people? And what instructions are they giving the people? They sending the people left to the right. They going. They sending the people everywhere, but to the Messiah. But we're a kingdom of priests. We gonna get back though. We gonna get back there. So we back there now. Some of us already been redeemed. Some of us right now are walking in that light. I believe all of us walk in that light. Hallelujah. If somebody, if somebody say, think I'm lying, just say not me. Let's go. Ain't nobody gonna say that though. Let's go there. Let me finish reading. Where's the Lord? And they have handled the law, knew me not. The pastors uh, also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal and walk after the things that do not profit. Wherefore will I plead with you, says the Lord, and with your children, children will I plead. And he don't mean plead like he could be begging to cut your uh, plea deal. It ain't that type of plea. He going to deal with you. Um, let's just jump down. Jump down to verse 21. Jump down to verse 21. Yet, it says, yet I have planted thee a noble vine. That's that choice vine again. I mean choice, right? I planted you a noble vine. Holy, a what? A right seed, right? A right seed, how thou art turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me. Let me start blowing over. Hmm? It got nothing to do with him. It says, for though thou wash thee with nature, right? That's a that's like a substance, right? And, 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 and take thee much soap, yet thy iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord God. How canst thou say, I'm not polluted, I have gone after Belem, see thy way in the valley, know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift uh, a door drum. Uh, what's how you pronounce the word? Drum dairy? How you pronounce the T word? Tra traversing her ways, traversing her ways, all right, as a wild ass using the wilderness that sniffed up the wind at her pleasure and her occasion, who can turn away from her? All that seek her will not weary themselves, and her mouth shall not find her. Start going off. See, that's why we got to thank them because, man, you could, some people can go off and never come back. You go off, you get lost in that world, and never come back. But we about to thank the Almighty, because all of us was in that, I, I don't know, I ain't going to speak here, but some of us was in that world, okay? Some of us were lost, but it was his love, huh? his, his word that drew us back to him. Hmm? That's, that's all it was. That's all it was. It was something that some type of something that touch you. They say, I need to go back to the Father. I need to go to him. I need to change my life. Huh? Ezekiel 15. We're going to go to Ezekiel 15. 
Um, you want to keep reading, son? Ezekiel 15. We did. We gonna get. We gonna get to us in a minute. We dealing with our ancestors. We gonna get to us in a minute. Cause he, that that soap and that that natural thing clean, huh? It couldn't get you right. One and six. It said, "I'm read one through six. It said, "And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is what is the vine tree more than any other tree, or than a branch which is among the trees of the forest?" Remember, he planted us as a choice vine. Now he asking Ezekiel to tell him, "Okay." What's the difference between a vine and any other tree, right? Watch this. Uh, shall the wood be taken thereof and do any work, or will man take a pen of it to hang any vessel thereof? Okay. Behold, it is cast into the fire for fuel, for for, for the fire devours both the ends of it and the midst of it is burned. It is meat for any work. Now, man, watch this. Behold, when it was whole. It was meat for no work. How much less shall it be meat yet for any work when the fire has devoured it and it is burned? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, as the vine tree among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so will I give inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will set my face against them that shall go out from one fire to another fire shall devour them. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that has set my face against them. In other words, the scripture is saying, look, the, it, the, the only thing good about the vine is that it got fruit on it. If the vine is, is not producing no fruit, it, it's just like the regular trees, right? But he, even the, the vine don't even burn when, it, when it's going to fire, it don't even burn like the regular trees. So you you even worthless. You ain't good enough but for fuel. That's what the vines are good for if they're not producing fuel, uh, food. It is good for fuel. So which one burn? If you, if you use some oak wood or some grape vines, which one you think going to last longer in that fire? That oak wood. And we're supposed to be the vine. So if we're not producing nothing, man, we worse than other nations. Because our job is to produce fruit. It's fruit. We ain't got no choice. Hmm? You, we, we can't play uh, both sides of the field. We ain't got no choice. Not if you claim, not if you believe you Israel. You, you, you can't play. You either gonna produce fruit or, 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 or you going to that fight. It, it, it's no middle ground. We don't got no choice but to produce His image in the earth. We don't, we don't have the option to uh, 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 be slight. We got to get to it. Because we represent the, 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 the seed of the kingdom. We, 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 we the ones that he forgot. We the fruit of his loins. The fruit of his mind. The image of Yahuwah in the earth. Supposed to be. That's the family name, right? Ephesians 3.15, the heavenly name that's in earth and in heaven. Israel is the family name. What you doing with the family name? <laughs> but it's only, look, it's only one thing, it's only one way to glorify him, and that's to bear much fruit. That's it. You glorify him by bearing his fruit. That's what he's glorified at by bearing his fruit. And the first level of fruit, first of all, is us to produce. We're just dealing with this today. Next week, y'all, we'll, yeah, we'll get into another part of it. But the first thing is to be a disciple, right? That's the fruit. That's why the Messiah, he he, he, he made disciples that's going to walk after his character. So we supposed to be walking after his character, and then we produce other disciples that's walking after the same character. And whether you know it or not, you discipling somebody. You don't have to go door to door like myself, or you know what I'm saying, do what I do, whatever. But you, you at your job, uh, you in the grocery store, wherever you at, or whoever you talking to, whoever looking at you, 
you are discipling them. You, you are teaching them something. Your family. When you, when you, when you go to talk to them, how do you talk to them? What, 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 do they, what do they think about you? When they think of you, they think set apart? Do they think righteousness, holiness? Regardless of they keep the law of the commandments or not, do, are, are they afraid to speak against your name? Are they afraid to say anything contrary other than rights and holiness to you, uh, about you? Let's go to John 15. He, he bringing us, he bringing us to this point. He bringing us to this point. Where we can produce food. I'm Israel. I'm a Israelite. What's your fruit look like? I don't care nothing about nobody quote no scriptures. It's good. But what what that fruit look like? Huh? So it says 15. It says, I am the what? True vine. He the vine. It's always been him. And my father is the husband. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges. That it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Remember this, what we just read in the old Deuteronomy and Exodus. He spoke the same, it's the same word he spoke. That fire, he spoke the word to them. That what made them clean, but then they got by dirty. That's why I asked that question earlier. How do we not become unmindful of the word that now the Messiah is saying, he, he, I'm speaking to you. He spoke to them back then. Now he, he said, it's the word that make you clean. But if you don't, if, if you don't follow that word that he's speaking to you, this is a matter of time before you start going back, back into your field. He said, now you are clean through what? The word which I have spoken unto you. See, when it said they were the children in, in Deuteronomy 32, uh, I think it was 32, uh, I forget what it was. It says they, they are children of no faith, right? It's it because he, he kept speaking the word, but because they didn't have no faith, faith come by hearing, by hearing the word, they, 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 they didn't want to believe the word he was hearing. So they start walking contrary. It's the same thing going on today. When you hear the word, when you, when you read the word, do you believe it? This why is an attack on this Bible because you have brothers and sisters going to try to tell you, don't believe this word. And if you're not anchored in Hamashiach, you're going to believe them over the book. Telling the brother last night, that tripped me out. You think I'm going to believe some Negro who just learned Hebrew uh, 48 hours ago for to come telling me about one of these brothers that don't die for the gospel? Nah, homie, get out of here. I may not understand everything about the word, but I'm standing that this book is what it is. And I'm putting my faith in the Holy Spirit uh, to bring me understanding. You ain't getting me about the book, brother. We, 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 we got to get this thing right. Let nobody take you. Don't let nobody undress you. I don't know everything. And guess what? I don't want to know everything. I just want to know what he want to give. Me. One thing I do know, this is the truth. And if you don't understand it, you better be patient and wait on the Lord to give you the understanding of it. And be patient. Don't let him undress you, Zion. But let me, let me get to this point. Let's get here. Me. Okay. It says, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So the only way we can uh, bear fruit, which we must do, 
is we have to abide in him. If you're not abiding in him, you cannot produce new fruit. And that's the only thing. This is the only thing that he chose us for is to produce fruit. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you could do something. That what it say? It say without me, you could do a couple things. It say you could do what? Nothing. Without him, without the king. You could do nothing. Because he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. You can do nothing without him. That's why it's so important to be led by the Ruach. Because if the Ruach can't lead you, you trying to do something, it ain't gonna be about nothing anyways. Because he ain't leading you, he ain't telling you to do it, and you can't do nothing without him. So now you're trying to do something with your own, you may seem like you're getting a couple of coins or some little bit of food or whatever, but at the end, it's going to be destruction because you can't do nothing out of it. It ain't going to stand. Stay angry. We're going to get to the seed. We're going we're gonna to get to us. Let me just finish. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. A man gathered them and cast them into the fire, and they are what? Burned. If ye abide in me, and, and, and what? And my words abide in you. I mean, that seed, because words are seeds supposed to stay in you, huh? Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Wherein is my father? Here we go. It says, Wherein is my father glorified? This is when he's glorified, right? When, when this word abide in you, you can do some fruit. Right? Wherein is my father a glorified that ye what? Bear much fruit. So he's glorified through the fruit that you bear. And it's much. This is how we glorify him. Watch this. And so so that ye shall be my disciples. So if you ain't bearing no fruit, how you a disciple? How you a, you a Jacobite? <laughs> Israelites bear fruit. Then you get disciples. But see, the thing about the disciple, right? The first thing they tell you to do before you become a disciple, the first thing you got to do, even before you pick up the cross, what it say? Before you pick up the cross, it say something else. To become a disciple, what's something you got to do even before you pick up the cross? Talk to me, Zion. What you got to do? Before you even, he said, my disciples got to do this. This is before you pick up the cross. It's something you got to do to pick up your cross. Because first of all, if you don't do this first, you ain't even going to pick that cross up. If you do, you're going to pick it up and put it right back down. Bring forth fruit. What is meat for Before you bring forth that fruit. Because you got to pick up the cross to bring forth fruit. Because you got to die to yourself. Because the seed got to die. This flesh is that fleshy seed. You got the cross on. You got to die. And then that's how the fruit going to come. But it's something you got to do before, before that. Deny yourself. Deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. You got to deny you first. When you deny yourself, now, nah, because that cross symbolized death. Who want to kill themselves? You trying to save yourself. If you ain't trying to deny, it, look, if you don't deny yourself, guess what you're going to be doing? Trying to save yourself. So you ain't going to pick up that cross. You'll pick up that cross, and then when somebody come against you, get what you finna do. You gonna what they say? Let me put down my religion. I'm finna tell you a piece of my mind. You gonna be picking up that cross, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. Now when we pick up the cross, we keep it on us, cause that symbolizes death, because we don't deny ourselves. So our life is even better at this point. We 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 living, but we the walking dead according to this flesh. We living according to Him. You know, this old man crucified. Because I, I got my, I'm, I'm, I'm carrying the cross. You understand what I'm saying? Because I already denied myself. It doesn't matter what my flesh desire, what my flesh want. This, this is what we get into. We're, we're getting to this point that, that we first, see, this is what happened with our ancestors. They didn't want to deny themselves. 
They was getting the word, but self kept coming up. This is the whole war. That Paul said, I have a war, a war what? In my members. The war was him even keeping God's law or, or, or serving this, this, this law of sin and death, this flesh. That's the true war. That's your real enemy, your own flesh, the devil. It ain't no, it ain't no Babylonians, no Assyrians, no white man. That's who he sent to punish you because you wouldn't deny yourself. So he sent them to punish us so we'll get back right. Your mama, remember back in the day, your mama and daddy whoop you? When your mama and daddy whooping you, who, who cussing out the belt? Who get you? And you might not be cussing out your mom. You probably doing it in your mind, but you ain't getting that in the belt when that belt is tank or squeezy or switches. Or you whooping will hit you with that switch. Ah! I ain't mad at the switch. I'm mad at mama. Now, you might get mad at, you know, you go to, I used to hide belts. I hide a belt in a minute. I was good for that. I, had a lot of belts hiding. Then you get that shoe action. Well, they tell one of my brothers or cousins to go get a switch. And they used to go out there. We used to, man, you get in trouble, man, we go get a switch. We go try to, if it ain't you getting the but you go get the biggest switch you can. You try to find a big switch. So when you think about the mindset, your brother never finna get a whooping. Your mama tell you, go get me a switch. And you out there laughing, trying to find the biggest one because you want them to get tore up. Ain't that's that's just think about that. Boy, that was that was funny. That, that, that's that that's kid stuff, though, but that just brought me back a little bit. But my point in saying that is it's your mama or your daddy that's whooping. It ain't the belt or the switch. Okay? That's just a tool that they're using to bring some chastisement. Hopefully it brings some correction to get you back right. Hey, and if I can, uh, just to, just to expound on that, man. This is a uh, this Bring is a out, good word. Um, uh, we just have to learn to die to our our. Just like you were saying, we got to die to our own works. We got to, and, and that's the hardest thing to do when we talk about being in the truth, which is which is kind of where you. That's the area where you're in right now. Is is for those who are in the truth, even to die to your works that appear to be righteous before your eyes, and how we do that. It's coming before Hamashiach every single day. You got to go with the mediator to see what it is that the Father wants you to do. And that's something that you get. You get the big head when you're in this truth and you've been walking for a minute, you've been walking for five years, 10 years, you know, plus or whatever. And you start getting in your own, you start getting in your mind that you know what the Father requires, but you haven't went before the mediator to see what it is that the Father wants. And this is why the testimony of Hamashiach is so important because he said, I only do those things which please the Father. So if we Come want on. to do the things that please the Father, who are we supposed to go before in order to know what the Father wants us to do? And this is this is the hard thing. Um, when it comes to my daughter, Come on. my daughter oftentimes she'll make the mistake of doing something that she thought was right to do, but I didn't tell her to do it. And so even though it seemed right in her eyes and she could justify it in her own mind, I still got to punish her because I ain't tell you to do that. I wanted you to do this. And you took it upon yourself to do X, Y, and Z. And so, man, what, what you're hitting up is beautiful because you, when you talk about denying yourself, it's even when you believe your works are righteous. Have you brought it to Hamashiach first? Have you allowed him to be that mediator to tell you, no, this is what the Father would rather have you do? Um, because a lot of times, you know what I'm saying, you'll, you'll find that when you go to, you're going according to your own works, even though you sought to do something that's righteous, you still created a mess. And so, man, you man, you right up in the pocket, bro. Keep going. This is good. Stuff. Hallelujah. Oh, crazy. Beautiful word, holy man. That that's that's a beautiful, be beautiful, beautiful word he's brought out. You see what I'm saying? Because because you can you can have the right intentions, right? You can mean well. But if the rule I can't tell you to do it, you off. That's why I like the like that like, like more was saying. Look, we we have to we have to always he said acknowledge him in what? Some of our ways, all of your all his ways acknowledge him. Because the spirit gonna tell you, yo, nah, that ain't what I want you to do. Step back, put that down. But when brothers don't do that, or sisters don't do that, you get the big head and thinking you could uh, uh 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 learn something to do something. This what you man, that enemy will uh, have you so wrapped up, you'll think you so doing so right because every man is sink. Every man is right in his own eyes. 
when there's no king. When there's, it said the scripture said when there's when there was no king, every man was right in his own eyes and did what he wanted to do. So when you take the king of a mafia out of the situation, you're gonna be right on how you see things. And the devil gonna give you just what you want. He's gonna let you research and find just what you want, and you're gonna self-approve yourself because you don't took the word out of the equation. Then you get so wrapped up of what you think, what you believe. Now you ain't even realize that I didn't try, I didn't put what I, I didn't put my thinking to the fight. You know how much I be riding around, and then I, I'm, I'm thinking I be talking to the Lord, and I'm like, "Ooh, that's a good word, Hallelujah!" My wife, I got so many notes, I write them down. Or oh, this fire right here. Oh, thank you. This, this it's gotta be the Lord. But what I always do, I come home and I look to the other side, and I don't know who was talking to me. That I knew that one on my yard, but at first that thing seemed so right. I'm like, oh, and sometimes I even call one of the brothers up. Hey man, let me, let me tell you what this came to me, bro. Uh, boom, check this out. What you what you get out of that? You, you see what I'm saying? I, I I put it to the fire. I don't just uh, get a word, right? And uh, <laughs> you got to I'm saying you got to be careful. You got to be careful. That's why we got to stand the fruit of the spirit. We got to walk in the spirit. You see what I'm saying? You got to walk in the spirit. You always got to acknowledge him in all things. Always take everything down. Always. You will never get to the point where, where you got it. Where you know. Let's get it. The only thing you about to know is that you, that you anchor in the Messiah. Let's read this. It says, um, well, I love for a fact. Uh, nine. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to read eight. Okay. I'm going to read it again. Here is my Father glorified that ye, must, that ye bear much fruit, so ye shall be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Right? And if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even if I have kept my Father's commandments, abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye may joy, that, that, that my joy may be remain in you, and that your joy may be filled. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that they have man, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. Verse 12 is so beautiful, and we have to catch it. He said, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Laid his life down, gave it up, and, and, and more, not more importantly, but, 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 but just as equal as important as the way he was loving them at this point, because this is before he had died, right? This before he died. So he say, he say, this is my commandment. But he, watch it. He, he, he say, let me read it again. Let me calm down. It says, this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved what you. So he's talking about something in the past. This is before you go to the cross. So what is he talking about? He was talking about how he was compassionate with them, how he was patient with them until they got to understand it. You see what I'm saying? He, he was showing them how he was dealing with them. Man, do you got to do others how I've done to you. You see what I'm saying? When I was with y'all, man, I knew y'all ain't really know what's going on. I knew I had caught your fishing, a uh, tice collector, physician. You already had your thing going on, whatever you had going on in your personal life. I seen the sacrifices you made. So that's why he said, look, I, he, he's trying to show us here. The Messiah was telling him, look, I was patient with you. Right? I, I, I was showing you compassion. I was understanding. That's how we got to be with one another. This way, this way he was dropping jewels to them. Then he said, you know, you, we know the, the fulfillment of it when he, the, the, the end of it, just the greater, it says a greater love, right? That he laid down his life. That, 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 this is the thing that we missing. We missing a part of being compassionate, right? Being understanding, being patient being gentle, understanding some of our people coming out of a, another system. Well, even in this system, they're still struggling and, and doing whatever they're doing. We, we, hey, we ain't saying just tolerate no sin. We got to understand the walk. We got to understand that the, the, the patience of this, the grace, the mercy. Go to that. Go to, we're going to get Matthew 16, 24. I just want to get this script. So you can write it down. Matthew 16, 24. 
He said, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man co will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. See what I'm saying? So you got to deny yourself first, then take up your cross, then you follow him. That's how you become a disciple. Because he already understands that you need to deny yourself, that cross is going to come against everything that you want to do. So you're going to be going in and out if you need to deny yourself. And that's the hardest thing to do is to deny you. Because you, hey, we love us some us. You love you some you. And then he telling you to deny you all for the sake of glorifying him because once he don't plant that seed in you, you got to die. So guess what? He can come out. And that's the life. Your real life is hid in him. You see what I'm saying? Your life is hid in him. If your life hid in him, which is the seed, you got to die because what we look at in the mirror is our mother, is our father's seed. So that got to die so that your real life can, uh, you can start living your real life through Hamashiach. But if you don't die to you, you live in the life of Adam. That first Adam. Go go to John 12. I gotta pull it up in this. He said, Your life hid in me, and he the seed, he the word. That's why you gotta deny yourself, you gotta die. He in you, but you gonna let him live? Let him speak. I'm going to run that verse. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to start at verse 16. It, it says, and hold on. From, hold on, Zion. I'm going to bob it out this one out. Hold on. All right, start at 16. Hallelujah. It says, Man, thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Right, I'm going to start at verse 16. These things understood, yeah, these things understood not his disciples at first. Right? They ain't understand it. Right? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll stick it. We'll, we'll stick it. Hallelujah. It says, these things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remember they, these things uh, were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, their record. But this caused the people also met him, for they had heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world is going after him. So we see a little hate. They get a little hate going on right now. They hate the people don't realize that man, this man don't rose up Lazarus. You see what I'm saying? So now the people are like, yo, he 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 had to be the guy, right? <laughs> and there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship the feast at the feast. That this this chill that little false doctrine about Israel to get salvation. We see these Greeks coming up to to worship at the feast, right? But I ain't gonna get into that. That's a whole nother topic. The same came therefore to Philip, which were was at Bath Bathsida of, of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we will see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew, and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man shall be what? Glorified, right? Verily I say unto you, 
except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So what he's saying, if he, he's talking about himself, but what he's saying, if, if, if you got a seed of corn, right, and it falls to the ground, if it don't die, if that shell don't break, it's going to stay just a seed. But once it die, then I think and once it died, then the seed going to the ground, now I can bring forth so much other fruit. So he, 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 he's talking to us. If you're not willing to die to yourself, all you got is you. You can't bear much fruit. He won't water just you. This is what he was trying to show Israel. Y'all my firstborn, but I need y'all to die to self so y'all can go bring me some more fruit. Because when you die to yourself, I'm going to be glorified. You're going to be able to see me. But I don't want them looking at me and you. It's what he's telling us. Look, eat the mess. Uh, look, let me read it again. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. That's all that's good for just that one little seed, right? But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. How many people can eat off one corn, one, one little kernel of corn? How many people can eat off if it die and bring forth much fruit? Okay, he that loveth his life shall what? Lose it. And he that heareth his life, that hateth his life, this world shall keep it until life eternal. That's why you gotta deny yourself, right? If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, uh, serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. See, the Father gonna glorify his name through the death of the Messiah. Him giving up his life that the Father can be glorified. But that, what, what does it have to do with us? So, so how is the Messiah glorified in our life? What we got to do? Hmm? What do we have to do to glorify the Messiah in our life? We're going to have to die to self. You have to get off your, your high horse. You're going to have to deny yourself. You have to walk in the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the meekness, the temperance. You see what I'm saying? We ain't talking about letting nobody uh, be, be in no doormat. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't on, uh, that ain't what it's talking about. It's talking about deny yourself. Being patient, that that old man, that anger, that bitterness, that selfishness, that, that hatred, that jealousy, that wrath, that's destroying you anyways. Deny that so that the seed can bear fruit in you. And it's going to bring other people to the Messiah because he's going to be lifted up. You die to yourself, he's going to be lifted up. But we want to be lifted up with him. <laughs> we, sometimes we want to be lifted up. And see, this is... This is why it's hard to die to self, and this is why this walk can seem so hard, because what happens when you die to yourself, look, everybody that died to yourself, you, you want to see some harvest, you want to see a little fruit, you want to be able to see your reward. Like, God, I, I don't gave up all this, I gave up everything, but I don't see no fruit, I don't see no benefit in my own life. Everybody else benefiting, but well, where's my benefit? People want to, see, sometimes people want to see something. But it, it's seeing him enough. It's talking to him enough. If knowing that you're doing the will of, of, of Abba enough, are you satisfied with that? Or do you or do you want or do you want something in return on this earth? You want to see you want to see some benefits of you dying to yourself on this earth. That's what stopped a lot of people from denying themselves. I'm for the die to myself. And walk in love, walk in his character, and then I ain't, I ain't getting another deal. It ain't about us. It's about him. It's about glorifying him. But but guess what? He's gonna bless you. You already blessed the fact that that we in him. That you the firstborn. That you the first fruit. Let's look at a little example. Of this. Let's go to Joshua. Let's see something Joshua had to endure. You see? see the, And look, even the Messiah had to deny himself. When he used to get on that cross, what he said, not my will, but what? 
let thy way will be done. He had to deny himself in order to glorify the Father. It came to that point where it was like, man, come on. But he knew he had to do it because he had to produce us. He had to be, 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 got us. It was other sons that had to come. What'd you say? What'd you got? Let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. She said, I should just say it. Let me read. John, where is that? 28. Let me finish reading. She said, I should just keep reading. Let me keep reading. Then John 20, John 12, 28, Zion. It says, Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I John, yeah, man, John 12, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore stood by and heard. It said that thunder, others said as an angel speak. Now I got you. Uh, Jesus answered and said, This is the voice. This, this voice came not out because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto some men. Say all men. Anybody who's born, he going to draw. Come on, man. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him. We have heard out of the law that Christ abide forever. And how says thou the son of man must be lifted up? Who is this son of man? We ain't going to get it to the rest of that. But Zion, the same thing is going on with us because the Bible tells you to follow his footsteps. He, he, we follow his footsteps. The same thing is going to happen. He's going to be glorified and us dying to self. And this is how you you would draw if you want to draw your family if you want to draw whoever you lift him up you got to self. We we got to quit trying to figure out what to say to get people to come. That's why the church even some not just the church some people they put on all type of events bring all artists in trying to draw people in. Nah, you lift him up, and that do the drawing. It is your walk. It it is it, it, your walk. You draw people by your walk. The fruit that you produce. This was gonna bring them. Not letting a, a, a rapper that's famous draw. As soon as that rapper become unfamous, some people probably leave. But anyways, we ain't gonna just talk. J Joshua fourteen. That's what I want to do. Joshua fourteen. Joshua fourteen. We die to self, let the fruit that's in us bring forth the Messiah. And guess what? He's going to draw the people to you, to him. He's going to do the work. You got it. You, hey, y'all got We got him in us. We just got to deny self. We're going to start it off. At let's start at verse. Uh, hallelujah. I just want to get to the point. Let's start at verse uh five. Start at verse five. All right. It says, As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Just showing y'all some patience, how we gotta be patient when this walk, right? You you don't get what belongs to you, right? Check it out. Then, then the children of Judah came unto Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, talking about Caleb now, the son of uh, Ju Juniper, the Canaanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the things the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me, and thee, and, 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 and Kish, and Keshadira. But the point I want to get here, understand, Caleb know. Caleb was saying, look, Y'all know what the Lord told Moses about me. He confident, right? Because he knew that he was doing what the Lord said and the Lord's word ain't going to fall. So he ain't being cocky here. Don't think he's being cocky. He just let it be known. Man, y'all heard what Moses said, the Lord said about me. But watch this. 40 years was I, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from, man, who know how to pronounce that word? I, I hate what did you say? Kadesh Bania. I don't like pronounced stuff. Kadesh Bania 
to, to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. So he letting it be known right now, look, I was 40 years old, right? But Moses said, look, go in the land and spy it out. Everybody know that, right? That's in the book. They all hear it, right? Nevertheless, my brother that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly follow the Lord my God. That means with his whole heart, he followed the word of God, right? He letting it be known, right? And Moses swear on that day, saying, Surely the, the land wherein thy feet hath trotted shall be thine inheritance and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. Right? He, he followed, came and followed with his whole heart. Watch right? this. And now, behold, the Lord have kept me alive and said these 40 and five years, ever since the Lord spake his word unto Moses. When the children of Israel wander in the wilderness, and now lo, I'm this day four score and five years old. So it, it took him 45, he 85. So he letting it be known, look, don't think I'm gonna get this land that I ain't been through the test. It, I've been walking this thing out for 45 years, okay? And I kept the word with all my heart. I'm not no Johnny come late. Don't, don't, don't. It, 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 Hey, Caleb, let them know. I've been in this walk. I've been doing this, going through the same thing y'all going through for 45 years. So what's due to me is due to me. Basically telling me, don't, don't go to hating now when you see the Lord go to blessing. See, some of us can say the same thing, right? It ain't got to take 45 years, but I'm just telling you, it could take a little time. But don't allow people to make you feel bad for one when the Lord starts blessing you. You don't owe nobody nothing either. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord will provide. If he say he's going to do something, he promised you something, he's going to give it to you. He's going to bless you with it. But it's your whole heart. In it. But understand, he ain't just blessing it just for you. It's for the whole generation. It's for his whole family that's coming after him. And he's going to share with the people. We're going to get into that. Probably not today, but just, just understand. I'm just coming here to show that Caleb is letting it be known. Don't think this just happened overnight. This thing took 45 years, but because I wholeheartedly follow the Lord, he promised me something and I done it. He laid his life down. Exactly. He denied himself to get this because remember, we don't have to hit it. now. Re remember, it was only two of them. Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report. The other 10 didn't. So the people wanted to kill him and Caleb. I mean, kill him and Joshua was standing on what the Lord had already promised him. Because the Lord had already promised them in Exodus, uh, look, y'all going to the land. I'm going to take the land. Y'all going to take the land. So what oh, man. <sighs> Caleb and Joshua, man, they believed what the Lord said. They didn't get caught up in what the giants looked like. They believed what the Lord said, we're going to take the land. They denied themselves and said, you know what? He said it. We're going to believe it. We're going over there. We can take them giants. But but watch this though. But it took this understanding took 45 years to this point. It says, and yet I am strong this day as I was in the day when Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so my strength now, for war both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain where the Lord spake this day. For thou hearest in the day how the uh Ankims were there and the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then shall I be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Caleb, the son of uh, Jupiter, Hebron for an inheritance. Okay. And, he and, and Hebron therefore became an inheritance of Caleb, the son of uh, Jupiter, the Canaanite, unto this day, because, because what? Because he whole, because he woefully followed the Lord God of Israel. That's why he got it, because he did not lose faith. He kept faith. And everybody else lost faith, he kept it. He kept going. And then it took him 45 years to get what the Lord promised to him. So some of us, when you die to your flesh and that seed is being, uh, you bearing fruit, don't worry about it if you ain't getting what the Lord promised you just yet. Just keep digging, keep going, because you're going to get it. You're going to get it. 
you're going to get what the Lord has promised you. If, 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 if the Lord don't give you what he promised you, what that make the Lord? He ain't no liar. He, 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 ain't, gonna, he ain't no liar. Go to Joshua 14. Let's go to Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Numbers 14. I, I want to pull something up. Before we we, we we won't get finished off in a minute, but I, I want to read this. We're gonna get to us bearing that bearing other kids. But I want to read this. I, I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask you a question too. I don't like asking questions. Look, if it was already prophesied, right? This is my question. And we're gonna answer with the book, but I'm just gonna ask a question. Um, let's read first. Okay. Let me let me ask this question. Because it was already prophesied, right? To Moses to tell the children of Israel way back in Exodus 32 and 33 that um that we was going to go take the land, right? He already told him that we were going to go take the land. So my question is, why then did Moses send his spies to spy the land if God already told him we was going to take the land? That's my question. Why do, why do we think that Moses, if God already told Moses that, hey, I'm going to give you the land that I, that, I, that, I, that I swear to your forefathers. I'm going to give you the land. He told them in Exodus 32, right? In 33, he was telling them, I'm going to give you the land. But then he gets to the point, and then he say, look, he, Moses sent 12 spies over there. The Lord had told him, I'm going to give the land. Why do you, and Moses is following God's instructions. Why do you think he sent the 12 spies? Because we're going through this right now today, and it's a good thing. But I just want to know, why do you think Moses... Why do you think God told Moses to send? Because God told Moses to send the spies. Let's read it. Let me read that first. But I'm, the question going to be, why did he tell him to send the spies when he already told him y'all going to take the land? Let's read this. Let me see. It says, uh, where, is, where did I start at? Verse, let me see, 20. Let me start at verse 20. Uh, yeah. And the children of Reuben, Israel, eldest son, the generation after families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of names by the poles, every male for 20 years old upward that were able to go forth to war. Those that were number of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were 40 and 6,500. Out of the children of Simeon, their generation, their families by the house of the fathers, those that were number according, according to the number of names by the poles, every male from the 20 years upward. They were all able to go to war, went to war. Okay. I'm just, just dealing with this war. The, the children of, let me just jump down. Y'all know that's dealing with the war. Let me jump down to this point. If anybody got that answer, we, we just build because it's something that we're going through today that has to be done on what, what Torah is trying to show us why the Lord had already told them that, yo, y'all going to take the land, but then he come here and he, he told Moses, he say, look, Sending 12 spies. Why is he sending in spies if we already gonna take the land? Why I gotta go spy the land? Hold on, let me get to this. Anybody got anything? What you say? Okay. Wifey say she think it was to prove him, right? She she said she think it was to prove him to see what they believe God. That's why he sent the spies. And anybody agree or disagree? Huh? She said the reason why he sent the spies, it was to test them. We're going to show that's exactly the answer. 
me show that. Because this is going to be important with us. Because he already told them they're going to take the land, but then he tell them to go say uh, exactly what you said. We're going to prove it in the scriptures. He told them to go spy the land because he wanted to see if they're going to believe what he already told them or what they see with their eyes. And this is what the difference between Caleb and Joshua was. They did not go off what they seen with their own eyes. They believed the word where Yah had already spoke. So Yah was proving them with his own heart. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, we can go to the scripture because what happens, Abba was speaking to you and tell you to go talk to somebody. And then you go talk to them and they don't work out the way you thought it did. So now you get all discouraged. You're like, oh man, y'all, you told me to speak to them. I spoke to them. They told me to get out of their face. They don't want to hear no word. But you don't understand. You could have been the one just uh, uh, tilling the ground up. You could have, the other person going to come and plant it. But because you didn't see or hear what you want to hear, you get discouraged and say, that's a heathen. We're going to come back to this. <laughs> Let me get up. Let me read it. Y'all bear with me. Just finding the scripture. Okay, look at verse, uh, we're in Numbers, uh, Numbers 14. Numbers 14. Um, I'm going to read at verse 1. And all the children lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that he had died in the land of Egypt, or would, go, uh, would God we die in the wilderness? And wherefore have the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should pray? where it is better for us to return to Egypt, okay? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return back to Egypt, okay? Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the similar congregation, the children of Israel, and Joshua and the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Juniper, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land, which we pass through to search, it is an exceeding great land, right? And, and the Lord delight in us. Then, what? Well, if, watch this, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us a land which forth with milk and honey, right? Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the Lord, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us, fear them not, right? If you walk in the spirit, you're doing the Lord's work, he your defense. Nobody got no defense against the word, okay? Caleb and Joshua understood it because they, it was in their heart. They believed this from what Moses for the Lord had already spoke to them, right? But all the congregation bed stone with them, uh, bed stone them with stone, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle congregation. Behold, all the children of Israel, okay? And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will the people provoke me? How long will they err? They what? Believe me for all the signs that I showed among them. It's why I went there. You see two out of the 12 say, look, man, we could take the land because they believe it in their heart. The other people didn't believe it. Why do you think, that ain't no question. Look, they wanted to kill these two brothers based off them believing what the word said. The word already said, that hey, y'all gonna take the land for them, make the honey. And because these two brothers went over there and say, yo, this land, we can take it. This is this is for us. The, the other people was going off their, their what they seen, and they made the other people fear, right? The 10 spies made everybody else fear because they going off what they see. They're not going off faith. Joshua and Caleb are going off faith, right? But the people don't even understand, nobody understood at this time. Why y'all was even sent the spies in there? And like she just said, it was to prove them. It was to prove what was in their heart. Are they going to go off what the word said, or are you going to go off what, what you see? Are you going off what this word say, or are you going off what you see? This is going to, this in this last days, the same thing is going to happen to us. You cannot go off what you're saying, you better go with what the spirit is telling you. 
you better go off what the spirit is telling you and what you're hearing. Because if you go off what you see, I ain't saying walk around blind. Y'all know I ain't saying that. You understand what I'm saying? But it's what the spirit has already told you. You're going to have to stand on that. Because if you go off the way it look, guess what? You're going to be fearful. You got to go off with the word already spoke to you. The word spoke something to you because this is about us dying to self. A part of you going off, don't go on, not going off what you see is you dying to yourself and believing what the seed said to you and being patient so the fruit can come forth. Because just that land that he was for the plant us in so we, we can bring forth more fruit. But if we would have listened to them 10 spies, guess what? We wouldn't have went enough. So you would have never been able to bear fruit. Some of us in this situation right now where he don't told you something, he tell you to do something, right? And, and, and you're down on because you're going off what you see, not what he already told you. So you ain't going to bear no fruit. All because you ain't willing to deny yourself. Oh, look. Go to Proverbs 17, 3. They wanted to kill them for living by faith. The other, the, the whole congregation wanted to kill these two witnesses just because they were living off what the word said. Not what somebody else, not what the other people seeing. And if we don't get into it today, but I, I tell you this, uh, next week, if y'all will, we gonna get into, uh, they went over there and one of the things Moses told them to do was bring back fruit. So when they went to that land, they brought back fruit. They brought back a whole bunch of fruit, right? But they, the people brought back the fruit, like look how big these fruit is. But they seeing that this fruit over there is a good land, but they still telling the people, that the 10 spies saying, no, nah, we can't go over there. You got the fruit. It, you, you see it's good, it's prosperous. You already see, he already showed you the fruit, but yet they saying, you know what? No, we can't take it. We, 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 we can't take it. Based off what? Based off, they see them giants in the land. They see the giants in the land, so that's calling the doubt the fruit. But we don't get into that. Proverbs 3, just to, just to show something here. Proverbs, Proverbs 17, verse 3. It says, the, the finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tries the what? The Lord tries the heart. He tries the heart. And he puts you in situations to test you, the trials in your heart. Because fruit got to come from your heart. That's where the fruit going to come from. It comes out of your heart. But he's testing the seed so you will know where you at. Because you think of these people going that land with fear in them, what kind of fruit you think they're gonna produce? Even though they, in, he said the land was good, it was plenty, it, it was a fruitful uh, hill, but why they could not produce no fruit? Because what was in them? What was in them? If the seed of Abba not in you, you ain't for to produce no fruit. Hallelujah. Fear and doubt. True. True, Akoti. Fear and doubt. And that's the same thing as keeping some of us from producing fruit. Fear and doubt. We got about four more scripts. I'm going to get up out of there. Acts 16.1. Sow some fruit for people who didn't have no kids, but they still brought first fruit. Acts 16 1, just to show this real quick. It says, um, then, then came he to Deborah and Sarah and Lysera, I'm sorry, and behold, a certain disciple was there named, <laughs> you know, I was done. I, forgive me, y'all. I think I was reading Numbers, Numbers 1, and I was reading the, uh, 
I said go to number 14. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hold on, Zion. Uh, y'all gonna let me read the wrong chapter? That just came to my mind. Why y'all got me up here reading the wrong chapter, man? When I was reading number one, I told you number fourteen, right? And I started reading. I'm in number one. Y'all gonna let me keep going? You should have stopped me. Come on, man. We just don't let me shoot you the wrong way. Stop. Y'all read. In my mind, I'm like, man, this ain't. I was in numbers one. <laughs> All right, hallelujah. That's my fault. I said numbers 14, but I went to numbers one. I just realized that it was numbers 14 that I went. But that being said, they probably like, what that brother doing. But anyways, uh, this is what I came here for. Uh, to show something about Timothy. Then came he to Debri uh, and Lesra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, and the son of a certain woman, which were the Jewish, and believed, but his father was a Greek, right? So letting you know, Timothy's father is a Greek, right? So Timothy already got a daddy, right? So let's go to 1 Timothy uh, 1 and 2. Let's go to 1 Timothy 1 and 2. For some of us for coming to some of these er errors right now. It says Paul, and we know Paul, it, Paul is not a Greek. Paul is a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, right? It says Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, until what? Timothy, my own son, and the what? In the faith, grace and mercy, peace from God, our Father, and Jesus, our Lord, right? Jump down to verse 18. It says, to this charge I, com I commit unto thee, and to thee, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before thee, and thou by them mightest war, war a good warfare, holding faith and good conscience, which having with which some having put away concerning the faith, made a shipwreck. The point I want here is to show that Paul is calling Timothy his son according to the faith, because Paul birthed him, okay, by way of the spirit. Okay, so Paul is calling Timothy. His son wants us to catch this. This is what Israel was supposed to be doing. This is what, the, because when the Messiah begot us, it was a spiritual thing. He didn't, like I said earlier, he didn't have sex with nobody that begot Israel. It was a spiritual thing that he begot us. So now the job, when he begot us, our job was to go, to go begot the other nations by transforming them into the, the, the gospel. First Corinthians chapter four. Um, where should I start at? Verse one. Yeah, I'm going to read verse 1 for context and jump down to 15. It says, Let a man so account of us as for the ministers of Christ and stewards of the minister of the uh, mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. So if you're a steward, you, you must be faithful. Just go back to Cable. Cable was, his whole heart was in it. He hold on to that thing for 45 years. Okay, so if you're a steward, let it be found that you are faithful. Okay, but with me, there's a very small thing that I should be judged of you of a man's judgment. Yeah, I judge my own self. Okay, let's jump down, get to the point. Uh, verse 14 it says, I write not these things to you, shame, but as my beloved sons. This is all again, I warn you, right? We know Paul didn't have no wife, he wasn't married, he wasn't fornicating, right? It says, for though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have, have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the what? Gospel. I begotten you through the gospel. See, this is why we're not even trying to go into it. We read that Matthew 21, 43, when he started taking that nation and giving it another nation, or Romans 9, 4, when he said we come into adoption, we got to understand what's going on with them scriptures. 
He's adopting us. He's birthing us into something. This is how we all become brothers, real brothers and sisters. This is how you get you a new family. When he says, who is my family? Them that do what? The will of the Father. <laughs> so you yourself, if you got the seed of Hamashiach in you, right, and you bearing first fruit, when you go to introduce somebody to the Lord, right, when you breathe on them, I ain't saying you got to go out and breathe your breath, you can if you want, but the, the point I'm saying is that when, when you disciple somebody and you bringing them up, you're responsible for them. But it's all you always point them to Christ. You always direct them to Messiah. It's not you. It's the Messiah that's in you. But guess what? They become they, they become under you as far as like sons and daughters. You understand what I'm saying? Sisters and brothers, these type of things. This is what make us all family. This is, this is a spiritual thing, Zion. Hmm? We're gonna close it out with Revelations 12, 17. See, got to die in order to produce fruit so we can get these other sons and other daughters. It says, and the dragon was wrath with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You got that seed of a Mashiach in you that's going to produce the fruit of the spirit and keeping these laws and commandments, you're going to be at war. The enemy going to come to make war. I guarantee you, Revelations 12, 17. If you producing fruit and that enemy can see that fruit, he going to know that fruit is coming from that seed. He gonna come try to make war with you because he do not want you producing more fruit into the earth. He don't want you producing much fruit. He don't want you going to all nations, uh, producing much fruit. So he gonna come try to make war with you. But guess what? We already got the victory because he already been defeated. All we gotta do is hold on and be faithful like Caleb. You see what I'm saying? Hold on. The war has already been won. All we got to do is just like, like football. We, we up by 30. It's, it's 10 seconds left in the game. All we got to do is take a knee. Quit, false start. We, we, we prolonging the game. If we just stay in position, let the clock run out. We good. Championship. Ball game over. Hallelujah. Uh, that's all I got. It's hours, Zion. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Hallelujah. All praises to Abba, the Son, Yahshua, the Holy Spirit. Let's do this Hebrew roll call. Hallelujah. Let's get in here with our uh, uh, TJ. What you got, holy man? Nothing but love for the family. Thanks to Yahshua for delivering it to us. Thank you for uh, the Holy Spirit bringing this message to us to waking us up again. And, uh, even if we are dying to ourselves, what you've been reminding us of and the Holy Spirit been telling us since we've been gathering is that when we wake up and we got all this breath coming through us and we able to move, we got that life. So while everything else around us is dying, we still getting a chance to keep living. So all praise to the most high for that. Hallelujah. All praise. Hallelujah. Let's see. We got we got a Koti Cynthia. Miss Cynthia, man. How you how you feeling today? How you doing, Mama? What you got? Would you like to say anything? You're not. Hallelujah. We're going to go on down. A, a Coty Monica. You got anything to add, sis? Shabbat Shalom to the family. Good word as usual. Definitely made me think about some situations that I've been in and what's to come. Just making sure that we're prepared when we speak to people. 
you know, as you said, there's going to be attack on the word, making sure that we're steadfast in our belief systems. So when we come up against that, we can speak boldly, you know, um, professing our Messiah and not be moved. Hallelujah. Oh, praise. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We got Rakima, a Koti Rakima. Or is that Tone? It's both of us. Hallelujah. I have nothing to say, just thankful to hear the word today. Hallelujah. All praise, all praise. Let's see here. Mother Barbara J. Johnson. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's your mama, her uh, brother, by where the spirit birthed me. All praise to the Messiah. Let's see here. Uh, Akoti Mitali. Hallelujah. She says, well, she, her, uh, she was having mic problems. Let's see. Uh, Koti Mitali. Shalom, family. I seem to have mic problems today. Stay faithful, everyone. The kingdom is almost here. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. It's coming. Kingdom is on the way. Yes. Let's see. A Koti Regina. Yeah. Oops, sorry about that. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> I uh Bless Yah for uh, our more more work. This is, um, I'm telling you, what we're learning, the Shabbat uh, lessons as we're, you know, each each week it seems they get, they get, they really do. Um, what you said, what I got out of it is that we can bear good fruit when we get out of the fear. Our seeds have to die. We have to die. Mm -hmm. The seeds, desires, our ambitions, the plans to accomplish goals based on our ways must die. And there's a, a funny, a uh, few years ago, the, the movie Romeo Must Die, you know, <laughs> for those of us in the 80s, 90s. <laughs> that thing, Rome, the whole thing, Rome must die. That Rome that lives in us, the Egypt mm -hmm. ways, the um, worldly ways, they have to die in us. And um, uh, in converse, Rome's death is our life, you know. And you talked about the falling away, Maury. You covered in Second Thessalonians, yes. chapter. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. You know, today's message really is equipping us to be on guard against the. Um, there's a fake cover story, I believe, that that'll come out where to shift the narrative, and that's how the falling away. And it's in line with what you were just saying. True. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, the, the, the lies that changed the scripture or mixed are what's established truth and faith for us, the foundation, you know, something comes and tries to break up that, that basic bedrock. We have to be on guard against that, and that's what you're doing for us. We are the people. We, is it, it, we, it ain't nobody else. <laughs> it ain't them, the thems who are saying that they are us. Yahusha is our Messiah. There is no other way, true for life. You know, you're yeah. you're you're helping us to hone in. These are foundational faith, uh, um, uh, faith rocks for us. Anything established not on this is gonna fall. Not and today, it answered questions for me. To be honest, there's some personal things that I said. <laughs> you know how we were talking about Gideon doing the fleece, and I was like, okay, yeah, I want this to be addressed. I want this. And I was really specific. Hallelujah. And spoke to them. And oh, did praise! It. Hallelujah. Some basic truths in uh, salvation during today's today's lesson. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah! All praises to the King. Let's see. We got House of Monty. The house right. of it's your boy Shalom, family. Shalom. Boy Shalom. I, I, I like the message. Uh, I like I like the message. It's uh it's beautiful. I always reflect on Isaiah 41 and 10 when it comes to faith. And you know, like you said, I don't care what it looked like, what the most high said, he said he with me. So what shall I be afraid of? It don't matter, he's going through it. And then, you know, what faith is is a fruit of the spirit that we must bear. Um, and it's so important and it's going to be so rare 
that the Mashiach had to ask when he come back, will he even find faith? So something we definitely want to heal on, heal, heal on in and focus on and let everything else die and just believe the most high. He the creator. He knows what's right. So bless you. Thank you for this message today. Hallelujah. Good to have you, holy man. Blessings. Let's see here. Uh brother Samson, can you speak? Preach. <laughs> I'm just uh truly blessed. Uh mo most definitely a wonderful, beautiful word, man. An eye opener, iron shopper's eye. Just trying to stay focused. Try to keep it going, man. Thank you. And love the family. Love love you. You. And uh, uh and our uh, Troy. What you got, holy man? My brother, my brother. Hey, my man, with everything that's been going on, uh, I appreciate everybody's prayers for the family. Um, I thank you, my brother, for the word today. And I'm going to say this, man, the most I put this on my heart to say, uh, when it comes to you and your wife, y'all are a spiritual, holy matrimony. And I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm just saying the most I put it, put this on my heart to say this morning, when it comes to you and your wife, hear her. And then when it comes to your wife, hear him. Like, don't listen. I'm not talking about listening to each other. Hear each other because the most high is doing something special with you both. And I just pray that you both just, just lean on him and just do, uh, what he is requiring each of you to do and come together as one. You don't realize how big of an example you are. Hallelujah. You are in. Uh, please hear each other. Hear each other. Hear oh, each other. Great. He's saying it because I'm telling you, man, I had a dream about y'all. And uh man, y'all have been a big influence in, in me and my wife's life. And I don't think y'all y'all oftentimes realize we can get lost in individual circumstances and things like that as far as our own marriages but hear each other and hear what the most high is saying through each other and come together closer as one and i'm praying for you both uh Oscar was there for me this, this week you were there for me last week uh and i know uh my big sister was there for my wife last week and i just man i love you both and uh Hallelujah. good word out good word out Beautiful. We receive it. We yeah. receive it. We receive it. We we receive it. Good stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, praise it. Okay. Good stuff, man. Receive that. Hallelujah. Look, Zion, we're gonna bid each other farewell. But uh seek, seek, Zion, seek that eternal rest. Right? Seek that eternal rest. We, 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 we get the, 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 the Sabbath, but tomorrow we should be right back at it. You know what I mean? Seek the eternal rest, and that's that eternal life. That's when that kingdom, uh, like a Muko, a Koti Mitchell Lee said, it's on the way, it's coming. That's what we seek. It. It's a beautiful thing that he give us this little, this, the 24 hours here, but that's just 24 hours. We, we seeking that kingdom, the eternal rest, where we can really enjoy them and really enjoy each other. And not have to worry about clocking in on Monday or cutting the yard tomorrow. You understand what I'm saying? Going to get a haircut, worrying about all this stuff. Going to the grocery store. We seeking that eternal rest. But he in us. Look, I love y'all. We'll pray out. And we're going to read that first one. Let's see. Did he put it on anybody hard to pray out? I'm putting this up. Let's see. I'll pray out if you're looking for somebody. Run it. Go ahead and pray out. I'm going to hit that uh, first Corinthians 110. Go ahead, sis. Abba Yah, thank you so very much for giving us this time to come together, to lift your name up high, to give you all honor, praise, glory, and respect. The respect and the honor and the glory that you deserve 
from every one of your children on this earth. Baba, as we come before you, we ask that you will uh, help us to empty ourselves out of ourselves so that we can be filled up of you, so that we can be the images of you in the earth that you originally sought after. Allow us to stop doing our will and to submit ourselves to doing your will so that we can go out and be the lights that we're supposed to be. First, we have to look within, clean ourselves out, and allow you to be everything that you need to be through us so that we can go out and help other nations to find the beauty that is you. Hallelujah. Allow us to continue to be obedient and serve you more and more on a daily basis. Every day, allow us to grow in you. Please forgive us of our sins, both known and unknown. Any unknown sins that we have before us, Abba, please reveal them to us so that we can righteously turn away from them, turn towards you and walk away from them. We cannot make sure that we don't do them again if we don't know what they are. So please bring them to the forefront of our mind, whether that it hurts or not to know what it is, we need to know so that we can make sure that we are aware of what we need to turn away from. Help us to be good examples as we go out into the world after today's rest day and we go about our daily tasks. Help us to keep you at the forefront of our mind in all that we do. Allow us to remember the, the love that you have for us, the deep, deep love you have for us. And please, Abba, may we be able to return that to you. Help us to walk in the example of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, and to day by day, work at being a perfect reflection of who he is. When we look in the mirror, Abba, allow us to see our master. Hi. And allow us to be able to pass your words on to everyone, whether it's through word or through example, just by the way that we live our lives day by day. Watch over everyone that is a part of this ministry, all their families, and anyone they come in contact with, family, friends, coworkers. Keep us in your hedge of protection, Abba. And may we have a right mind to never walk out of your hedge of protection because you said you'll always keep it around us if we're faithful to you. But we have the option to follow our own mind and go astray. So please, Abba, let us make sure that we stay close to our shepherd who protects us and keeps us always. All this I pray in Yahushua HaMashiach's glorious name. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians 1.10. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. Love y'all. I stand his grace and his mercy. Shalom. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, family. Shalom. Shabbat shalom, y'all. Love you. All praise to the most. Shalom. Shalom.